Temperature homeostasis. The average temperature inside the body is between 35.5 to 37.7 degrees Celsius. Internal temperature increases with exercise and or after eating. And that's why you might feel hot sometimes after these strenuous activities. Now the body's internal temperature is lowest early in the morning and is actually highest late evening. Temperature homeostasis within the body is the balance between heat input and heat output. If one of the other is compromised, you can feel the symptoms of cold or hot within the body. Now heat input can come from two ways. One way is heat produced inside the skin, inside the body, sorry, internally. Examples of increased heat is after you eat, the metabolic process, and also when you contract your muscles. The second way of heat input is from the outside, externally. Some examples can be from conduction or radiation. Now conduction is basically heat from a hot object touching your body, such as this hand touching hot water. Radiation is essentially caused from radiation which every object ejects, emits. Obviously this is very minute heat. On the other side of the scale, heat output or heat loss from the body comes in four ways, which are conduction, convective process, radiation, and evaporation. Now conduction is different from conduction in heat input because instead of a, the hot object touching your body, it's a cold object and this results in the body emitting heat out. Convective is essentially the air or hot air rising from the, from the ground which also causes your body to emit heat. Convective also strengthens heat loss through conduction and radiation. Radiation as mentioned is heat being absorbed and emitted by your body from surrounding objects. Evaporation is when water evaporates from skin surfaces, causing heat to be brought out with it. So let's go over the four ways we lose heat again. So again we have the conduction, remember radiation, convective, process and evaporation. Now all these three ways are enhanced by the bulk flow, such as wind, so that there is more heat being emitted out of the body. Anyways, the inside of the body is warmer than the outside. Now the body's internal temperature is easily maintained without any mechanisms if the temperature in the outside is between 27.8 to 30 degrees Celsius. And this environmental temperature between 37.8 to 30, 30 degrees Celsius is known as the thermoneutral zone because it's neutral for the body. So the internal body temperature can be controlled by the thermoneutral zone, in the thermoneutral zone. But if the outside is much higher than the thermoneutral zone, such as 40 degrees Celsius, there is obviously more heat being produced than heat being lost within the body. And so there is a rise in internal body temperature. And same goes if the temperature is much lower than the thermoneutral zone. It will cause more heat loss and no heat production, therefore a decrease in body temperature. But even if this is the case for both situations, the body tries to keep internal body temperature constant by using homeostatic conventions. And so because of this homeostatic conventions in the body, a naked man or a naked girl can keep e its internal body temperature relatively okay for some time, even if the outside is between 10 to 55 degrees Celsius. And the process as to how the body tries to keep the internal body temperature balanced is called thermoregulation. Very cold weather, however, is actually psychologically challenging for humans and so is more difficult to adapt to cold environments. Humans are naturally tropical mammals, but through evolution we have been able to learn to adapt to challenging temperatures. The thermoregulation mechanisms, which I introduced just before, is controlled by the thermoregulatory center, situated in the hypothalamus in the brain, and it tries to keep an internal temperature balanced. Now, in the hypothalamus area is actually, are also thermoreceptors, which detect changes inside the body, and there are thermoreceptors on the, on the skin, which detect changes to the temperature on the outside. Now, the thermoreceptors in the skin are known as the peripheral, peripheral receptors, and the ones for internal temperature in the hypothalamus are known as the central receptors. Let's, let's look at an example of thermoregulation. If the peripheral thermoreceptor senses changes in temperature, it will send these signals to the thermoregulatory center.
This center will then this information will then get processed and an appropriate response will be sent to the body to try to keep the internal temperature stable. A autonomic response. Now, de now depending on what the initial stimulation was from, the thermoregulatory center's response can be either responding to cold weather, which means that it will try to retain heat, or it can be responding to hot weather, which means it needs to lose heat to keep internal body temperature in equilibrium. The mechanism of how to lose heat if the body is responding to a rise in temperature is by di dilating its blood vessels, also known as vasodilation. And another response is by sweating. And if the body is responding to cold, the body will shiver or use non-shivering mechanisms such as stored fat. Let's look more closely at these autonomic responses to the hot environment. So here we will zoom into the skin where we can find the cutaneous blood vessels over here. Actually, the blood vessels can work in two ways. Re retain heat, so less heat is lost, conserving the heat. Or, as we want to know, it can release heat, heat loss. Now, let's just quickly look at both these ways. If there is cold temperature, the thermoregulatory center is stimulated, which will then cause vasoconstriction, which will then retain heat. So vasoconstriction, which will then retain heat, so less heat loss, which means a warmer body. What we are looking at now mainly is how the body responds to hot environments. It will, st If there's a hot environment, it will stimulate the thermoregulatory center, which will then cause the opposite to blood vessels. It will cause vasodilation, which will increase blood flow around the body in the skin, causing an increase in heat loss. Now, another way for heat loss is by sweating. So here is a bad anatomy of the skin with hair follicles and blood vessels. The skin contains many sweat glands which secrete basically sweat. And when sweat evaporates, it carries heat out with it. And the inter Now, the inter intergrammatory system actually consists of about 2 to 3 million of these sweat glands. The autonomic response to cold environments where the body tries to produce heat or retain heat can be divided into the unregulated heat production, which is, for example, from muscle contraction, or the regulated heat production, which is basic, basically the shivering thermogenesis or the non-shivering thermogenesis. Now, the shivering thermogenesis is called, caused by skeletal muscle tremors which will cause the thing we call shivering, or the action we call shivering. And the non-shivering -shiv non -shivering mode mechanism is from brown fats in the body, which may cause heat retention. So let's just recap what we learned from the start now. So here we have the thermoregulatory center in the hypothalamus. Let's see how it gets activated. If there is change to the temperature in the outside, it will stimulate the peripheral receptors on the skin, which will then stimulate the thermoregulatory center to do what it does. Same goes if there is change to the internal body temperature, which will stimulate the central thermoreceptors situated in the hypothalamus to then activate the thermoregulatory center. The thermoregulatory center will then either respond to an increase in temperature or a decrease in temperature. If it's a response to an, in an increase in, in heat, sig the signals will be sent through a symp sympathetic cholinergic neuron targeting 1, the sweat glands, to secrete sweat, and through evaporation of sweat, heat is being lost, or 2, the neuron targets blood vessels under the skin to dilate to promote heat loss. Now, if the body is responding to a decrease in temperature, the thermoregulatory center will send signals via two pathways, the sympathetic adrenergic neuron or the somatic motor neuron. The adrenergic neuron will target blood vessels under the skin, causing vasoconstriction to promote heat retention. And it will also target the brown fat and non shivering mechanisms which will increase the me metabolic heat production. For the somatic motor neuron, it will target skeletal muscles to cause shivering and in turn increase metabolic heat production. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that.